Assalamu alaikum everybody to lecture number eight which is about brain wave propagation or brain wave existence in different media in the previous lectures we talked about the plane electromagnetic wave in free space and now we're gonna discuss the plane wave in different media so the first type of media that we're going to discuss after free space is the media with losses so before we talk about the electromagnetic waves and uh, media with losses we'll talk about the losses in the media so in a lossless dielectric media relative permittivity epsilon r is real you would expect that for a lossy media epsilon r would be a complex number so what happened in lossy media? What is the mechanism of losses? So the idea is that when an external time varying electric field is applied to a material, there will be like a small displacement for bound charges that is occurring inside this uh, material. So inside any material we have dipoles as we discussed in uh, static electromagnetics those dipoles are composed of the electrons of the atom and the nucleus of the atom the nucleus is positive the electron is negative so they are like creating a, a micro dipole inside the material and those uh, like the dipoles are responsible to the electric polarization inside the material and we derived this relation in electrostatic that is stating that uh, the displacement field equal epsilon naught multiplied by the electric field plus polarization vector this polarization vector is linearly uh, related to the electric field by the susceptibility so we have the displacement field equal epsilon naught multiplied by one plus susceptibility and we call this uh, relative permittivity of the material so we have this relation and now we are talking about not just a static field but we are talking about a time harmonic field so a field that is switching its direction because it's sinusoidal so it's over time it is switching from positive to negative at any certain point so uh, we have this uh, variation at low frequency the electrons or those dipole will align to the electric field so the electric field is switching positive peak zero minimum zero and so like sinusoidal oscillation the dipoles like also like aligns themselves with the applied uh, external field when the frequency increase this action of like aligning with the electric field will be uh, like difficult because it's getting faster and we are saying that there will be some uh, frictional damping mechanism the internal structure of uh, the material is resisting this and this resistance causes some uh, power loss so how do we express this power loss of the media so we are implementing this by a phase polarization so that the dipoles take some time behind the electric field and the relation of the, uh, is expressed mathematically as epsilon r the relative permittivity equal the re a real part minus imaginary part so there is a phase between the motion of the internal micro dipoles and uh, the applied electric field also it can be expressed as some sort of a conductivity so the electric uh, power that is lost because of this uh, frictional damping mechanism can be thought of or can be like expressed as an equivalent to some free charges that raise some uh, ohmic losses 
so we are either expressing it this way so this is the part representing how lossy the material is or sigma is uh, expressing how lossy the material is or how conductive the dielectric is uh, another parameter to explain or like to express the loss the lossy of the material is loss tangent which is the ratio between the imaginary part to the real part of the relative permittivity so far we are talked about the phenomena of losses in dielectric material and how we express this uh, loss in the material now we want to like see the property of electromagnetic waves that exist in uh, those uh, material so we'll start by uh, like this uh, mathematical derivation so if when we have like a small real conductivity another thing before we go also like sometimes we have this loss mechanism plus some like free electrons in the dielectric and so there is two mechanism in this case for losing uh, for losing uh, electric power one of them is the damping mechanism of the dipoles the other one is the free uh, like small amount of free conductors and in this case we add up both of them to, to be one number as we said either like we like modify epsilon uh, r prime to include the free charges and the damping uh, uh, oscillation of the dipoles or we add them to be expressed as conductivity so this is how we handle when we have more than one uh, loss mechanism so what we have we start any analysis by Maxwell's equation so we have Ampere's law curl of H equal J plus partial D partial T or J omega epsilon E the displacement current that we talked about in the last two lectures and we have Faraday's uh, sorry we just like do this replacement j equals sigma e so for Ampere's law we have j omega multiplied by epsilon plus sigma we take the j omega outside so sigma, uh, sigma over j omega and this sigma over j omega is responsible to or it shows like this epsilon uh, double prime so this expression for Ampere's law and this is how the lossy uh, material will show up in the expression epsilon r now is like a complex uh, parameter epsilon uh, r prime is the real part epsilon uh, r double prime is the imaginary part of the relative permittivity so now the wave number k which equal omega multiplied by mu epsilon epsilon now is complex number so k itself also will be a complex number so when k is a, a complex number we introduce uh, gamma into uh, like this expression gamma equal jk which is alpha plus j beta so because k is complex we use like in our expression for the uh, propagated wave we have e to the minus jkz or e to the plus jkz or whatever uh, direction of propagation so jk is expressed as alpha plus j beta alpha is a real component when we have it here we say this is the attenuation constant so this like parameter here will be equal to zero if the material is lossless j beta is called the phase constant so the when k is imaginary we'll have like two components one component which is real 
that shows how attenuation uh, is happening inside the system, the uh, medium, and beta is showing how the uh, phase is propagating. If we have no loss, alpha will equal zero, and k and beta will be the same. So here, because uh, we have epsilon uh, double prime, we can take the epsilon prime outside. So we'll have the regular expression for k omega square root of mu epsilon prime multiplied by one minus j epsilon double prime over epsilon prime, which is tan uh, delta, the loss tangent to the power half. So this is the expression for gamma uh, or JK for lossy uh, material. And the expression here that we used to write it this way. So this is a wave polarized along linearly polarized uh, along X direction and propagating in the positive Z direction. In the case of lossy media will be expressed this way. JK will be replaced by gamma and gamma equal alpha plus J beta. So it will be E to the minus alpha Z multiplied by E to the minus J beta Z. So this is regular uh, phase variation, but this is new here. This term here is new and as Z increases, as we progress along Z, we are introducing like a decay or loss in the amplitude of the signal. So this show uh, the lossless, uh, sorry, or the lossy state of the media that we are propagating in. So now we have multiple like cases for lossy media. We have like some low loss media where epsilon double prime is much smaller than epsilon prime. And this is like a big category of uh, dielectric material is in this uh, category, epsilon double prime, much smaller than epsilon uh, prime. In this case, there is like a very uh, known approximation. I don't recommend that you memorize those uh, expressions that we're gonna discuss today because they are many and you will get confused. The best way that I advise with is to understand how to do the derivation. It should be quickly and it's like two or three different uh, cases and that's it. So I don't recommend that you go and just keep memorizing those different approximation. The better approach is to understand where they came from and how to drive them. So here there is a very common approximation that we can use uh, for uh, the case where we have epsilon double prime much smaller than epsilon prime. The imaginary part is much smaller than the real part of the relative uh, permittivity. We use Taylor expansion. So this is the case for or like the expression for Taylor expansion. If any function uh, uh, f of x, we can express it as this. In this case, x will equal this uh, j over uh, j epsilon double prime over epsilon prime and a is zero. So just replace those minus j epsilon double prime over epsilon prime equal x. So it will be one plus x. And we use, this is the definition of x, all of this. And we apply Taylor series uh, expansion. We can say that approximately, so we take the first three terms, approximately gamma, which is uh, jk will equal j omega epsilon uh, prime mu under uh, the square root. And then we just like do the expansion for this part. The expansion for this part will be one minus this j epsilon double prime over two epsilon prime plus third term one over eight epsilon double prime over uh, epsilon uh, prime. You can 
do this apply uh, Taylor expansion on this expression and you will find uh, that so alpha the attenuation constant which is this part uh, here will be uh, the alpha because j multiplied by j so this will be the real part of gamma and this will be the approximation the first order approximation because of the Taylor uh, expansion to 1 minus j uh, epsilon double prime over epsilon prime uh, square root this will be the expression for alpha and this will be the expression for uh, beta which is the phase constant another approximation that we need to do is for eta which is the intrinsic impedance of the media it's mu over epsilon which will be mu over epsilon prime multiplied by this expression so that's why because in, it is in the root under the square root it will be to the minus one half approximately also uh, using the Taylor expansion we will have this equal to uh, mu over epsilon prime multiplied by one plus j epsilon double prime divided by two epsilon prime so we notice here for lossy media eta the intrinsic impedance will be complex another uh, approximation is for the phase velocity which equal uh, omega over beta this is the expression for beta so omega is equal to uh, omega uh, equal to 1 because we have uh, omega here vb will equal 1 over mu epsilon uh, prime so this is the phase velocity in this media if the media is uh, lossless then this part is the modification because of the losses so if it is uh, lossless epsilon double prime will equal zero and we'll have just this regular expression one over the square root of mu epsilon this is the regular expression and this not here all of this expressions here are epsilon not epsilon uh, r so this is epsilon double prime epsilon prime it is not epsilon r prime epsilon r double prime no it is epsilon not the relative this is the total permittivity not the relative permittivity that is expressed here so each one of those epsilon r uh, r epsilon naught multiplied by epsilon r epsilon naught multiplied by epsilon r prime epsilon uh, naught multiplied by epsilon r double prime so on and so forth so uh, the phase velocity will have this expression there is some uh, like loss in, in speed it's less uh, velocity because of uh, the losses so again i uh, advise uh, you to go and start from this expression and derive all of this without memorizing so that you can like handle this pay attention to the details this is the total real part of permittivity this is the total imaginary part of permittivity so on and so forth Another case of lossy uh, material is the case of good conductor. The case of good conductor. In this case, we have sigma. And as uh, we said, we can add the di like dipole frictional loss and the free charge uh, uh, electric loss together to have like this component. So we have like sigma in this way and we write the expression of uh, Ampere's law where we have now to in the right side j omega epsilon 1 plus sigma over j omega uh, epsilon so this is the imaginary part of uh, or like this is a, like the imaginary part this is the imaginary part of uh, permittivity now and if it is a good conductor uh, sigma will be like much larger sigma over uh, 
omega epsilon, this part will be much larger than one. Much larger here means more than 10. So we can take this approximation or more than 100. It depends on how accurate you want to go. So when it is much larger than one, we can say like we can neglect one and uh, epsilon for a conductor will be pure imaginary. So epsilon conductor will be pure imaginary. Why? Because the imaginary part of the permittivity is much larger than the real part because we are saying this approximation is happening when sigma over j omega epsilon is much larger than one. So the one is neglected with respect to the term and this term is imaginary. So for uh, like good conductor, epsilon, uh, epsilon conductor is pure imaginary. So here gamma, which equal like alpha plus j beta will be j omega mu multiplied by ec ec is imaginary we can take the imaginary component outside so j divided by the square root of j equal uh, the square root of j and this now is multiplied by omega divided by square root of omega will have omega mu sigma so in this case the square root of j we did this discussion before the way to find this is to put j equal e to the j uh, by over 2 so we express the complex number in the phasor format and this will equal uh, like e to the j by 4 then we can put this phasor format into cartesian complex format so we'll have real component and imaginary component both of them does have the same magnitude which is omega mu epsilon under the square root divided by the square root of 2 so omega equal uh, 2 by f so it will be by f mu epsilon uh, sorry mu sigma this is the expression for attenuation constant phase constant for good conductor the other parameters that we are interested in are the intrinsic impedance and the phase velocity the intrinsic impedance this is the expression square root of mu over epsilon just uh, putting the uh, approximation here for ep epsilon conductor and we'll get the expression again it's a very lossy material so its uh, intrinsic impedance is a complex number if we like look into the phase velocity again same expression omega over beta substituting those uh, quantity we'll have we'll see that we have like very slow uh, speed of wave propagating in good conductor and if the conductor is perfect sigma equal infinity the phase velocity equal zero because we know uh, that we all know that there is no wave propagation inside a perfect conductor just to have a feeling for the numbers if we consider uh, like copper and we are considering 3 megahertz the phase uh, velocity is 720 meter per second compare this to the phase velocity in free space which is 3 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 meter per second so again it's very 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 slow and the more conductivity or the uh, higher the more conductivity the less uh, velocity that we had and of course like 700 meter per second is almost zero when it is compared to 3 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 meter per second in free space and you can see like alpha and beta does have uh, this expression from this result we can see that uh, a high frequency electromagnetic wave is attenuated very very rapidly as it propagates in a good conductor why because uh, high frequency means lambda is small so with any like uh, uh, distance the attenuation is very fast as we're going to see from uh, some other examples 
here we are introducing another uh, terminology which is the scan depth because of this like very high attenuation if we if the wave is propagating in a good conductor what would uh, happen is that in a very short distance the wave is attenuated fast and we are measuring the distance where the wave is attenuated to e to the power minus 1 or 2.03 and this is called delta the scan depth so this scan depth if you find the mass it will be 1 over uh, e along this distance the wave is attenuated to 1 over e very uh, low attenuation so this is called the skin depth and we like very um, common approximation is to neglect no waves after this skin depth and this skin depth at 3 megahertz for copper is about uh, 0.03 uh, millimeter at 10 gigahertz this is 0.6 micrometer so it's a very uh, thin uh, layer and that's why when we deal with conductor if it's a good conductor we assume that the electromagnetic waves penetrate to this depth which is very small so we can say no uh, electric field penetrating the conductor and of course if it is uh, a, a perfect conductor sigma equal infinity delta will equal zero so this is how the skin depth is uh, illustrated in many different ways so if we have electric field like going into this uh, material and this is a good conductor we'll have the field very strong at the surface then it's decaying very fast uh, when it goes down so if we have like this look the signal here if we assume on the surface it is uh, like 100% of the amplitude it goes like close amplitude very fast because very high attenuation constant and at this value when it goes down from 1 to 1 over e the skin depth is this uh, length the length at which, at which the amplitude of the wave is 1 over e its value at the surface and here for example if this is a cross section and we have uh, some signal propagating in a conductor we see that the, all the electrons of this signals or the current is uh, like just concentrated close to the surface and if we can say the majority of this current is concentrated in this skin depth so this is the concept of the skin uh, depth when we're dealing with code conductor material interacting with electromagnetic waves. So here we have an example to exercise those uh, things that we learned in this lecture. We have an electric field that is linearly polarized along the positive z direction that is propagating in a seawater the electric field does have this expression at z equals zero so this is the value at z equals zero this is electric field intensity e of linearly polarized so it is propagating in the ax direction the consecutive uh, constitutive parameters of seawater epsilon r mu r and sigma are as such epsilon r equal 72 sigma equal 4 and mu r equal 1 so we have some losses here for the seawater which is 4 and you would like to determine the attenuation constant phase constant intrinsic impedance phase velocity wavelength and skin depth so almost all the parameters of uh, the electromagnetic uh, wave in this media 
after that we would like to find the distance at which the amplitude of E goes to 1% of its value at Z then we would like to write the expression for E of Z and T H of Z and T at Z equal uh, 0.8 meter as a function of T so similar to this expression but at z equal 0.8 so as i always advise you please pause the video at this point try to solve this example yourself and then come to the solution so assuming that you try to solve this problem yourself now let us see the solution we have the expression here 10 to the power 7 multiplied by by t so this is omega so omega equal 10 to the power 7 multiplied by by pay attention to the units that is radian per second so we can calculate the frequency it's uh, 5 megahertz we know the value of sigma we now have uh, omega we have epsilon so we can find the value of a sigma remember that this expression to see if it's a good conductor or not is epsilon not epsilon r so we have epsilon naught multiplied by 72 in this case we'll find that this expression is 200 which is much larger than one so we deal with this as a good conductor so alpha will equal beta will equal the expression you don't need to memorize this uh, approximation you can drive it very fast if you would like to memorize it which i think many of you will do it's your choice so now we got the first two parameters alpha and beta and for intrinsic impedance we just continue uh, co our application of the definition square root of mu over epsilon with this uh, approximation of uh, epsilon conductor we'll have the expression here and the expression here is the unit is uh, ohm for intrinsic impedance the unit is ohm and of course this is complex uh, number it's not real the real number would have a phase of zero this phase is not equal to zero phase velocity it's omega over beta we have beta uh, then we can calculate uh, the phase velocity for the wavelength we do so 2 pi over beta and the skin depth uh, which is 1 over uh, alpha or we can get it from here the skin depth uh, equal by f mu uh, sigma square root So we have uh, the value here so the second question is at what distance z we have the amplitude goes to one percent of its value at zero so again the expression here would be e to the minus alpha z1 because this wave is propagating in the positive z direction it is propagating in the positive z uh, direction in this case for example like we have like a, a sea water and we uh, are propagating down into the sea and this is our positive direction so we need this at z equal zero it's one at z equal z one it's equal to 0.01 so we can find the value of z1 which is like 50 almost 52 uh, centimeter so it's very fast down the surface of uh, the uh, seawater we have like almost lost all of uh, our electromagnetic field the second or the last part 
uh, that we are required to do is writing the expression for the electric field as a function of time so what we have here like at the surface we have cosine omega t of course uh, minus beta z but z equals zero so beta z doesn't show up here now we want to like write the expression at z equal 0.8 uh, meter so the phasor expression is this one so this is the expression of the electric field which is propagating in the positive z and here the time dependence is implicit we know it but we don't write it if we are to write the instantaneous expression so we will take the real part of this expression the amplitude will be as is so this is an amplitude part this is an amplitude part the phase part will be cosine omega minus beta z we have beta we have z so we can write the expression of e at z and t as a function of time which have this expression we have a phase term because of z is not equal to zero now so this is the expression of electric field at this point to find the magnetic field of course we're going to use this relation that we know the magnetic field this is a plane wave if e is polarized along x h will be in the y direction the amplitude of h is the amplitude of e divided by uh, eta the intrinsic impedance of the conductor so now which expression that we used to do this should we go here and divide by uh, <coughs> eta conductor or we'll go from here and uh, calculate eta conductor the correct way to do it is to do here then we take the real part because eta now is a complex and this amplitude here is real so if we divide, divide real by a complex it will be a complex multiplied by cosine which give like a wrong uh, value the right way to do this is to divide e by the complex quantity here then we take the real part because we said like those expressions are equivalent under like certain condition but now when this eta is a complex this condition is not valid and the right way is to divide the phasor uh, expression first by the, con the complex quantity then take the real so we're saying h equals the real part of e as a function of z the phasor quantity divided by the complex quantity and this term here is implicit so we do the, the uh, divide in the phasor format and then come up with the cosine or like the time dependence uh, condition So we need to be careful when we are dealing with like this uh, relations, mathematical relations in case of uh, having a complex quantity that we are uh, dealing with. So please be careful and review this point because it's important. Another kind of uh, media that we are dealing with is the ionized gases what is ionized gases and why it is important so when we go outside of the earth's atmosphere like up to like 50 uh, kilometer and above we'll have layers of ionized gases that's called like ionosphere the ionosphere is composed of like free electrons and positive ions and those are uh, generated because of the exposed to ultraviolet of the sun so the characteristics of those atmosphere is depending on the uh, solar activity 
it changed from hour to hour during the day it changed from day to day over the year so it has like daily and yearly cycle of the sun are affecting them the density of those electrons uh, are equal and in this case we it is called like plasma so this case of having like sort of like a cloud of electrons uh, uh, and positive ions or uh, ionized material is uh, called plasma in this plasma the electrons are lighter so they are much uh, faster so we consider them like the moving part and we consider the positive ion to be sort of stationary as a first order approximation okay so if we have an electron the mass of the electron is uh, m the charge is minus e if it is in a uh, time harmonic electric field there will be electric uh, force affecting this electron which equal minus e divided uh, multiplied by the electric field so this force will cause this uh, ion to displace a distance x from the positive ion and we can write the newton law of motion for this electron which gives us this expression the displacement will equal the electric uh, charge of the electron divided by its mass omega square multiplied by the applied electric field this displacement will cause like a dipole electric dipole so we have electric charge moved a distance x from its positive ion so it's creating a electric dipole b which equal uh, minus e the charge multiplied by the displacement x and if we have like certain density of those ions per unit volume the total effect of those uh, electric dipoles will be divide multiplying the density by the dipole of like a single uh, ion which will give us this number so this is x here x is multiplied by e so we have e square and this expression is multiplied by n which is the charge density in the plasma so we'll have this expression as the polarization vector for the plasma and polarization vector here is related to the electric field with this expression the displacement field equal epsilon naught electric field plus polarization vector and then if we take we know that uh, polarization vector is proportional to e so we take e as a, a common factor epsilon not as another common factor we'll have this expression and of course now this is epsilon naught multiplied by a certain quantity multiplied by e so between brackets this is epsilon r and epsilon r is real in this case and it has this expression and we're going to see what is the consequence of uh, this expression on the electromagnetic wave existing in this ionized uh, media so this number here that we see n multiplied by uh, e square this is the charge of an electron uh, divided by its mass epsilon naught omega square we call this the angular velocity of the plasma like this quantity without omega is uh, called the angular velocity of uh, the plasma and we can uh, see that the epsilon of the plasma the epsilon of ionized gas equal epsilon naught one minus omega b square this quantity square divided by omega square so this is plasma angular velocity uh, radian uh, uh, per second 
and we can also define the plasma frequency omega b over 2 pi which is in hertz or 1 over second so this is the expression of the epsilon b the dielectric constant of ionized gas also the intrinsic impedance equal uh, the square root of mu over uh, epsilon and it does have this expression propagation constant equal j omega mu epsilon b and it does have this expression so we can like find out all the electromagnetic wave properties from this relation because now we have an expression for the uh, dielectric constant of the ionized gas so let us see how this will look like so if the plasma is oscillating at f equal the plasma uh, frequency then eb the epsilon of the plasma will equal zero so displacement field equals zero but electric field is not so that's why we called like this constant or this number uh, plasma frequency if the frequency of the wave is less than the plasma frequency gamma will be pure real this means it's attenuation without no propagation because the propagation is the imaginary part of uh, gamma in this case the intrinsic impedance is pure imaginary which is like a reactive load there is no power transmission if the frequency is larger than the plasma frequency gamma will be pure imaginary which means no attenuation and we have propagation eta b will be pure real so there is no uh, like loss it will be uh, transmission power so this plasma frequency is sort of like a cutoff frequency for like high band uh, bus filter anything below this frequency will not propagate any signal above this frequency will propagate and this is very important number for uh, GPS for example we know that it's coming from uh, the sky for uh, uh, like satellite communication for like satellite station for anything that goes outside the uh, ionosphere or uh, the, the earth that is like communicating with satellite we need to consider this plasma effect because the ionosphere is uh, ionized and this number is like very important another uh, quantity that we would like to discuss or definitions that we would like to discuss is the group velocity So we know the phase velocity of a plane wave which is omega over v and for some lossless uh, or like for lossless media it is a constant number so if we are sending like a band of signal so multiple frequencies they will all travel with the same uh, they will all travel with the same speed but for some other media like lossy media that we discussed uh, shortly the phase velocity is frequency dependent so it is varying with frequency and if we are sending data this data will have different speed so there is like uh, a need for defining the group velocity what is the velocity of this packet not the velocity of like a single frequency because in practical in practical signals are composed of multiple frequencies so like for side band for example like or so there is a band of frequency and in this uh, category we need to define uh, a group of uh, frequencies what are their speed this is the definition of the uh, group velocity so this variation in phase velocity among different frequencies 
causes signal distortion and this is called dispersion dispersion is like a very important uh, parameter when we're dealing with a media that have like a phase velocity that is frequency dependent because it it might distort the signal we send for example like you send your sound you get a different sound why because different component of the frequency of your talk will like arrive at different frequencies so there will be dispersion there will be like a, a change and we need to take this into consideration when we do our uh, analysis for communication system for example so the definition of group velocity is the velocity of propagation of a wave packet envelope so a group of frequency how uh, their uh, velocity is so let us watch uh, this video so let us watch uh, this video for uh, explaining the group velocity so here we have like two signals signals the red one and uh, the blue one they are added together and here's a black one is the sum of uh, red and blue we can see here the two waves on the top does have different uh, speed or different different velocity we can watch those uh, like points they have relative uh, speed to each other and you can see here define two things the green is the phase velocity just take any point and see how it's uh, propagating the magenta color or like this point represent the group the group velocity which is the envelope of uh, those uh, velocities so hopefully like this explains the situation very clear we have a phase velocity and this is another than the group velocity okay so after watching uh, the video for the group velocity let us now like see the math so for simplifying the math we'll consider just uh, a simple wave packet that is composed of uh, two tones frequency one omega node plus delta uh, omega two equal uh, omega node minus delta and they have different phase velocities uh, beta node plus uh, delta and beta node minus delta and we assume this delta is much smaller and this is very typical for real situation the instantaneous electric field is the sum of the two uh, waves wave one propagate with phase velocity one wave two propagating with phase velocity two so the sum of those two would give us uh, this expression here the red part represent the envelope of uh, this packet and the black one looks like sort of the carrier of this signal <clears throat> so if we consider like this expression which represent a wave that is propagating inside the envelope the velocity of propagation of the wave inside the envelope is the velocity of propagation of uh, this component and we did this before what is the velocity of this component we just take any point of constant phase and find uh, the velocity for it dz over uh, dt and we found that earlier the phase velocity for the carrier or for the wave inside the envelope is omega naught over uh, beta if we are to find the velocity of the envelope so we need to consider the envelope take any point on the envelope as a constant phase and find its uh, velocity which is the group velocity the same definition group velocity is dz by dt when this envelope like for any point of constant phase on the envelope we'll find that is equal to delta omega divided by delta b or it is uh, 
like the group velocity equal one over db by d omega so this is the expression for the group velocity as a contrast to the phase velocity that we derived uh, earlier let us have this example here so the example is talking about uh, a spacecraft that is entering the Earth's atmosphere, it has like certain speed and uh, because of its speed and temperature, it ionized uh, the surrounding uh, ionosphere, which creates plasma and the assessment or estimation of the plasma density is uh, 2 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 per centimeter cubed pay very much attention to the units so would like to discuss the plasma effect on frequency usage in radio communication between the spacecraft and the mission controller on earth so would like to find the plasma frequency we know that above this frequency there will be communication below this frequency there will be no communication so it's as simple as that uh, so n equal 2 to the power uh, 2 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 per centimeter so we need to find its value per meter uh, cubed so centimeter per meter cubed to transfer we multiply by 10 to the power 2 cubed or 10 to the power 6 so we have n equals this quantity we can find the uh, plasma frequency for this number which equal uh, 170 uh, 127 megahertz so radio communication can't be established for frequency below this number so n is very important uh, for like whoever is doing this mission to know so that to use a frequency above this plasma frequency because the plasma frequency as we discussed is uh, acting as sort of like a cut off frequency below it no communication above it there is uh, communication okay uh, the next part of this lecture uh, flow of electromagnetic power will be in a separate uh, video like part two of the lecture